Hello and welcome to this video on the discrete time Fourier transform and in particular we will look at the impulse response of ideal filters uh, computing them from the frequency response. So we'll compute one directly using the inverse Fourier transform formula and then we'll use Fourier transform properties and in particular the frequency shift property to get the other uh, impulse response. So what we have here on the screen is the um, Fourier transform or the frequency response of an ideal low pass filter and the idea is between uh, some value which I'll label omega c and minus omega c uh, the frequency response has a value of 1 which means that any frequencies in the signal that are input to the low pass filter will be passed through unaffected. Between omega c and pi and minus omega c and minus pi the frequency response is zero meaning that any frequencies in these bands will be eliminated completely. So it lets low frequencies go through and high frequencies get eliminated thus the name low pass filter. Now you'll notice that this is a periodic function and it's periodic with period 2 pi so this pass band gets repeated every 2 pi. Um, we'll use that uh, to our advantage in a little bit. So what we'd like to do then is we would like to find HL of N that is the impulse response of this ideal low pass filter. And we'll find HL of n by uh, actually just taking the inverse discrete time Fourier transform. So we can write HL of n. It is the inverse transform, which is 1 over 2 pi, the integral over an arbitrary uh, interval of 2 pi. HL e to the j omega e to the j omega n d omega. Okay, and this uh, interval or integral can be uh, computed over any interval of length 2 pi. And again, that's because the Fourier transform here, the frequency response, is uh, periodic. So, for the sake of convenience, we'll, I'll set this integral to go from minus pi to pi. Now, you'll notice from minus pi to minus omega c, uh, h, this guy here, will be equal to zero. So, uh, there'll be no contribution to the integral uh, from uh, minus pi to minus omega c. Similarly, from omega c to pi, there'll be no contribution to the integral between minus omega c and omega c, h of l is equal to 1. So we can actually write this then as 1 over 2 pi, the integral from minus omega c to omega c, e to the j omega n d omega. Okay, and uh, this inter integral is actually fairly straightforward to evaluate, especially if you've been working these sorts of problems for a long time. So we'll still have the 1 over 2 pi. We'll have the jn, which is the constant that omega gets multiplied by out here in front as well, 1 over jn. And then we'll have e to the j omega n evaluated, whoops, should have been omega c to omega c. We'll have e to the j omega n evaluated at omega c, e to the j omega c n minus e to the minus j omega c n. Okay, so this is the upper limit, that's the lower limit for omega. Okay, and um, you look at this and you immediately think to yourself, this looks like 2j sine omega c n. Okay, that's just Euler's formula. So my 2j 
I'll have the J cancel this guy, and I'll have the 2's cancel here. So I get then um, that this is, uh, uh, let's see, we'll put it up here, uh, 1 over pi n sine omega c n. Okay. And now I'm going to do one last step, which may seem to be kind of pointless, and do some rearranging. I'm going to write this. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by omega c, and then write this as omega c over pi sine omega c n over omega c n. And the reason for doing that is that this function here shows up often enough. It's got its own special name. It's sinc of omega c n. Okay, so my final results then is that the impulse response of the ideal low pass filter is omega c over pi times this sinc function. So I've computed this and plotted it, and I got the following. For omega c is pi over 4, uh, the h l of n looks like this, where this number here is n. And you can see that I have non-zero values both to the left of 0 and to the right of 0. The fact that I have non-zero values to the left of 0 means that this is not going to be implemented by a causal uh, system. Uh, so basically, in order to implement this ideal low-pass filter, I will need to have a filter that um, looks into the future to see what its input's going to be and starts working with it, which is um, practically speaking impossible, at least if we're dealing with time series. Uh, that's why we call this an ideal low-pass filter, because it's actually impossible to implement this guy exactly. Um, I've also plotted this for omega c as pi over 10, so if I have a narrower passband, I have a um, uh, impulse response that wiggles more slowly. A wider passband gives me an impulse response that wiggles more quickly. Okay, so that is getting the impulse response for a low-pass filter from its uh, frequency response, which is the Fourier transform of its impulse response. Now suppose that I want also want to have the impulse response of a high-pass filter. And so what I've drawn here is the uh, frequency response of this high-pass filter. And you can see that around pi, this has a value of 1. Pi, for discrete time uh, signals, uh, is considered to be high frequency. Uh, things around 0 is low frequency, and again, because it's periodic, uh, 2 pi is again considered low frequency. So I have this guy here, and I want to find um, the impulse response h h of n. Okay. Now I could do what I did for the last one and just uh, evaluate the integral, but that would be, um, how should I put it, that would be uh, less elegant than what we're going to do. So you'll recall that Oh, let's see, we'll do it in green. Our low-pass filter looked something like this. And you can see that to get this high-pass filter from our low-pass filter, we want to take the pass bands of the low-pass filter and shift them either to the right or the, to the left by pi. So I'll arbitrarily shift them to the right by pi. So each of these guys here from our low-pass filter gets shifted to the right, and that gives us our high-pass filter. So what I can say then is that this, the frequency response for the high-pass filter is the same as the frequency response for the low-pass filter, but now we're shifting uh, to the right by pi. So this represents a shift to the right by pi in the frequency domain. Okay. 
Now we can use the frequency shift property of the Fourier transform, which says that a shift in the frequency or, or a, a shift in frequency in the frequency domain is the same as multiplying by a complex exponential in the time domain. So we have that our h sub h of n is equal to h l of n times e to the j pi, because pi is the magnitude of the shift, times n. And now if you look at e to the j pi n, this guy will be either 1 if n is even, so it'll be, uh, if n is even, I'll have e to the 0, e to the 2 pi, e to the 4 pi, and so on. That's 1, or it'll be minus 1 if uh, n is odd. So I can write that in a compact form as minus 1 raised to the nth power. So my um, impulse response for my high high pass filter is going to end up being omega c over pi sinc omega c n times minus 1 to the n. Okay, and when I plot this, I get something that looks like this. So you can see that the envelope, that is the, the magnitude, if you will, of the impulse response stays the same, but the sign of every other sample is, uh, is different. So I go positive, negative, positive, whoops, let's see, uh, positive, negative, positive, Oh yeah, this is negative of what it would normally be, and so on. So basically, um, the sign of everything is flipped. And so uh, this gives me then a high-pass filter, uh, which hopefully makes sense. I, again, I've uh, drawn the, uh, uh, the impulse response for two different uh, cutoff frequencies. And uh, you'll notice that neither of these are causal, which means that uh, we can't actually implement uh, the system this way. So um, I guess that pretty much uh, wraps it up. Uh, hopefully you found this informative. Uh, the things to take away from this is that uh, we can get uh, impulse responses from Fourier transforms by working the formula directly, or uh, quite often we can do it using properties, which makes things a lot easier. Also, uh, you've seen uh, the frequency response of ideal high-pass and low-pass filters. You've seen the corresponding impulse response, and we've seen that these impulse responses are uh, represent a non-causal system. So, hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.